Liu Fang, and Meng Da. The strong and skillful adopted son of Liu Bei and the disloyal military general Meng Da. Both of their promising careers took a nosedive after they repeatedly refused Guan Yu's call for assistance when he attacked Fan Castle. Liu Feng's original lineage can be traced to the Marquis of Luo, who was named Ku. Ku was indirectly related to the House of Liu of Changsha, which founded the Han Dynasty. This, paired with Feng's skills in combat, made him a suitable candidate for Liu Bei to adopt as an heir. In 209, when Liu Bei seized the four commanderies in southern Jing, Changsha, Lingling, Gu Yang and Wu Ling, he adopted Liu Feng because he had no suitable heir at the time. Considering the recent death of Liu's cherished concubine Lady Gan, and the dangers her newborn baby Liu Shan endured during the Battle of Changban, Liu was most likely looking to secure his lineage with strong household members, as he also married Lady Sun of Wu around this time. After Liu Bei left to invade Yi province, Liu Feng remained in Jing. At this point, he was in his early 20s and famous for his combat skills and great physical strength. During Liu's campaign, before he had showed his hand, he asked Liu Shang for 10,000 troops to return to Jing, pretending it was in danger. At this time of discussion, Fa Zheng, Zhang Song and Meng Da secretly communicated with Liu Bei, trying to convince him not to leave. When he learned of the secret talks of Liu Bei, Liu Shang executed Zhang Song. Fa Zheng and Meng Da managed to find a way to escape and join Liu Bei prior to the battles, before Yang Huai, Gao Pei and Liu Zhang learned of Liu Bei's true motives. When war broke out in Yi, Liu Feng went along with Zhu Geliong, Zhang Fei and Xiao Yun to lead reinforcements from Jing to assist his foster father in the campaign. After victory was achieved, Feng was appointed as a vice general of the household. Meng Da was promoted to the administrator of Yi Du. And after Yi province was settled and under Liu Bei's control, Meng Da changed his courtesy name to avoid a naming taboo of one of Liu Bei's uncles. In 219, Meng Da received orders to lead the army from Xingui to attack Fang Ling. He defeated the defender, Kuai Chi, in battle and conquered the commandery as well. With raised spirits, he then pressed on and attacked Shang Yong. Liu Bei became worried for Meng Da and didn't think he could manage this alone, and so he sent his adopted son to reinforce him. From Han Zhong commandery, Liu Feng sailed his troops down the Mian River to rendezvous at Shang Yong. Together, he and Meng Da received the surrender from Shen Dan, the commandery's administrator. Liu Feng was thereafter promoted to a vice general but Meng Da did not receive any promotion. Their victories contributed to temporarily forcing Tao Tao to be on the defensive after his continuous setbacks. His loss at Han Zhong and being forced to deal with rebellions meant the Wei troops needed time to rest. This meant they could not carry out the proposed campaign to preemptively attack Guan Yu in Jing. Guan Yu led troops later that year and laid siege to Fan Cheng. He started capturing weakly defended towns and villages after the main Wei army became encircled but not completely surrounded at Fan Castle. After these initial successes for Xu, and receiving the surrender of many enemy troops and officers, the tide of battle turned to Wei's favour. The heavy rainfall hindered the invaders and the defenders, but stalwart defences put up by Wei put Guan Yu on the back foot. He had to focus his attention on his depleted food supply, and he also ordered for reinforcements to attack the now flooded Fan Castle. As time went on, Guan Yu heard rumours of talks between Sun Xuan and Tao Tao, which made him hesitant. He divided his forces and sent them to seize Fan Castle, but failed. His half of the army was then attacked by Xu Huang and forced to retreat. Guan lifted the siege on Fan Cheng and returned south, but much of Jing had already fallen to Wu by now. At this point, he became trapped at Mia Cheng, which is where he asked for reinforcements from Liu Feng and Meng Da. It's possible that he had already asked them for assistance before this point, as he asked them multiple times but was always refused. They claimed to not be able to support him, as the situation was still unstable in Shangyong. After Guan Yu was executed, Liu Bei began to resent the pair for not helping. Liu Feng fell out of Meng Da during a quarrel. Meng also became fearful when he heard of Liu Bei's anger towards him. The strange relationship with the Liu's made Meng Da worry so much that he gathered his family, subordinates and their families, which numbered over 4,000, and defected over to the wayside. Cao Pi gave Meng Da a warm welcome, and appointed him as an administrator. He soon found out that someone had spoken ill of Liu Feng to Liu Bei. Meng tried to convince Feng that he was in danger and should also defect. Meng Da's letter detailed two points to Liu Feng, that Liu Bei already had other sons at this time, and so he no longer regarded Liu Feng as highly as before. 
and that the Wei Imperial Court was willing to allow Liu Feng to inherit the Luo Marquis estate, which once belonged to Feng's biological family. Liu Feng didn't listen and returned to Chengdu to face his father's judgment instead. Liu Bei reproached his adoptive son for not helping Guan Yu and failing to stop Meng Da's defection. Zhu Geliong highlighted Feng's martial prowess and warned that if he switched sides it could become a problem. Bei eventually condemned Feng to death, but allowed him to take his own life. Before he committed suicide, Liu Feng said, I regret not listening to Meng Da. It's been noted that Liu Bei shed tears after Liu Feng's death. Feng had a son called Liu Lin, who became an officer of the standard. He served throughout all of Shu Han, and after its collapse he was ordered to move to Haidong Commandery. Meng Da was deeply favoured by Tao Pei, but many Wei officials felt he was untrustworthy. Sima Yi, who oversaw military affairs in Jing at the time, cautioned Tao Pei against putting too much faith in Meng Da, but he didn't listen to his advice. Under Tao Pei, Meng Da received many important appointments and a Marquis title. Pi merged the three commanderies of Fang Ling, Shang Yong, and Zi Cheng into Xincheng Commandery. He then placed Meng Da in charge of it and tasked him with defending Wei's southern border. He became close friends of Huan Ji and Zia Hao Shang during his time here. In 225, it was reported to Liu Bei by an old officer of Wei that Meng Da had a meeting with Wang Chong. In the meeting, it was claimed that Zhu Geliong urged Liu Bei to execute Meng Da's family after he had defected, but Liu Bei refused to do so. Meng Da disregarded Wang Chong's information and didn't believe that his family had been executed. By the time Tao Pi had died in 226, Huan Ji and Zia Hao Shang had also passed away from illness, which left Meng Da feeling isolated. He also began to feel uneasy as he had served on the front lines for a long time, and Tao Rui gave him less favour than Tao Pi had done before. During his time at Xincheng, he formed friendly relations with Wu and had built up firm defences against possible attacks from Shu. At this point, Zhu Geliong hated Meng Da for being inconsistent and treacherous, and so began exchanging letters with him to entice him to switch sides again. This defection was planned to go alongside Zhu Geliong's first northern campaign. Meng Da gradually developed animosity towards Wei through the letters, and eventually harboured the intention to start a rebellion. There are two accounts of Meng Da's motive for rebelling. One is from the Wei Lui, the other is from the Book of Jin. Both versions are generally similar, but there are some slight differences. The Wei Lui records that Zhu Geliong took advantage of Meng De's uneasy demeanour whilst he was at Xin Cheng. Their back and forth letters were discovered by Shen Yi, who reported it to Tao Rui, but he refused to believe it. Sima Yi caught wind of this, and sent Ling Ji to investigate, who also urged Meng Da to travel to the capital Luo Yang. Meng Da became suspicious after this, and fearing for his life, he decided to rebel. The Book of Jin account confirms that Meng Da had a feud with Shen Yi. Zhu Geliong sent Guo Mo to surrender over to Wei, with the secret task of leaking Meng Da's plot to Shen Yi. When Meng learned that his plans had been discovered, he began preparations to rebel. Sima Yi tried to calm and slow Meng Da down with a letter. General, you previously left Liu Bei and dedicated yourself to our state. Our state entrusted you with the duty of guarding the border and tasked you with planning an invasion of Shu. This is an obvious sign that our state trusts you. The people of Shu are fools and they hate you deeply. Zhu Geliong wants you back in Shu only because he has no other choice. What Guo Mo told Shen Yi is not a small issue. Why would Zhu Geliong so easily ask him to reveal your plot? This dangerous move is not difficult to comprehend. These words pleased Meng Da, which threw him into a dilemma on who to trust. He wrote a letter to Zhu Geliong. Wan is 800 li away from the capital, whilst I'm 1,200 li away from the capital. When Sima Yi learns I'm plotting a rebellion, he'll inform the emperor. The total time taken for him to send the letter and receive a response is around a month. By then my city is fortified and my army is ready. As I'm in an advantageous position, Sima Yi would not dare come to attack me. Once you arrive, I'll have no worries. As he pondered on whether to rebel or not, Sima Yi secretly led forces from Wan to Xin Cheng. Sima Yi's subordinates advised him to observe Meng Da before advancing, but Sima replied, Meng Da is not a trustworthy person. Now that he is hesitating due to suspicions, we should seize this opportunity and get rid of him. It took Sima Yi eight days to reach Xi Cheng, and they took Meng Da completely off guard. After his army had arrived, Meng Da sent another letter to Zhuge Liang. I plotted a rebellion. Within eight days, Sima Yi's army has reached my city. What godspeed is that? 
Mengda city of Shangyong was surrounded by water on three sides, and he had set up wooden barriers for extra defence. Sima Yi crossed the water, destroyed the barriers, and arrived just outside the city. Xu and Wu both sent reinforcements to assist Mengda. Xu help arrived at An Bridge in Zicheng. Wu troops arrived at Mulan Fort. Sima Yi sent his subordinates to deal with the reinforcements. He then divided his army up and attacked the city at eight different locations. Meng Da's nephew, Deng Xian, and his subordinate were tempted into surrender by Sima Yi. They agreed after only 16 days of fighting when they opened the city's main gates. The rebellion was swiftly suppressed by Sima Yi, who then captured and executed Meng Da. 10,000 prisoners of war were captured by Sima Yi, and he led his army to return to Wan after the battle. He relocated 7,000 households from Meng Da's territory to Yu province. It's claimed that two Shu officers and 7,000 men surrendered to Wei, but those two officers only appear in the Book of Jin. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.